Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about what is constructor chaining with example. Then I will explain why do we need constructor chaining that is what's the purpose of constructor chaining in Java. And then we are going to discuss about some rules to remember about constructor chaining. Okay. But to understand the concept of constructor chaining, you should know the basic knowledge about Java constructor and constructor overloading. And I have made a separate video on Java constructor and constructor overloading in simplified way. And links I will provide in the description of this video. You can go through it. So I assume that you have basic knowledge about Java constructor and constructor overloading. Okay. So let's begin. So let's understand it directly through an example. Now see here, I have already created employee class with its fields that is instance variables, employee name and employee id and create employee class object inside main method and here i have access employee details that is employee name and employee id okay using employee class object directly inside println method so that output will print on a screen all right and now if i run this code you can see here we have got employee name null and employee id zero so these null and zero are the default values and default values are the compiler's own values that is if we didn't assign any values to the instance variables then at the time of object creation compiler gives its own values to the instance variable that means now see here when i will execute this code then at the time of execution first statement inside main method will execute so this statement will execute and employee class object will create with its instance variables because instance variables are always belong to an object so whenever employee object will create then each time its own instance variables are automatically allocated under each employee object okay and then this constructor known as default constructor get called implicitly because i didn't create any constructor inside employee class and hence compiler will call its own constructor implicitly and default values will assign to the instance variables and therefore we are getting default values as an output but default values that is zero or null are useless values it doesn't make any sense in a program and that's why we cannot use these values in a program because employee name cannot be null and employee id cannot be zero right and therefore we will need to give meaningful values to the employee fields that is to the instance variable so that we can use that values in a program right and in java we can give values to the instance variables or we can initialize instance variables using constructor so let's create constructor to give valid values to the employee fields okay and constructor name always should be a class name and pass here string employee name and int employee id and right here employee name equals to employee name okay and employee id equals to employee id and let's print here employee name and employee id and pass here values that will match to these parameters okay so employee name suppose xyz okay and employee id suppose 301 and now if i run this code then employee class object will create and this parameterized constructor get call and then compiler look for this matching constructor inside employee class and will invoke this parameterized constructor and then this employee name will set to this local variable employee name and this employee id will set to this local variable employee id and then assign to the instance variables and will print on a screen so in this way we can give values to the instance variables that is in this way we can initialize fields of employee successfully so let's check it out what will be the output so let's run the code and let's see but before that let's comment out this line all right now let's run the code 
you can see here employee name is xyz and employee id is 301 so you have the basic details about employees that is employee name and employee id all right but in future if you want to add one more field and its designation of employee then what you will need to do you are thinking that simple add here string designation okay and pass here designation suppose senior software engineer so if you did like this then it will work but it will work only for this program because this program is very small but in real time we cannot do like this because just think if you are working on big real time application and if you modify already existing constructor that already being used in different places in the program then you will need to perform changes on all the places where that constructor is used so basically if you modify already being used constructor then it will affect on entire code of a program right and therefore we cannot modify already existing constructor so we cannot do like this so just remove this and this as well okay so if we want to add or initialize new fields using constructor then for that we will need to create another constructor because we cannot modify existing one right so let's create it and pass here string employee designation okay and let's create here one more instance variable and it's string designation and right here designation equals to employee designation and pass value for the designation at the time of object creation but here we cannot make changes and hence we will need to create another employee object so let's create it suppose e1 equals to new employee and pass here designation and it suppose senior software engineer okay and print here designation of employee and now if i run this code then this statement get executed right an employee class object will create and these two parameterized constructor get called and compiler look matching for this uh, parameter list of constructor in employee class because this constructor get call on employee object right and will invoke this constructor then control come back over here and another employee object will create and this one parameterized constructor get call and will invoke this constructor so let's uh, run the code let's see you can see here we got an expected output but after some days if you want to add employee phone number and employee address then for that again you will need to create another constructor to initialize that fields because we cannot modify existing constructor right so let's create another constructor employee and pass here int employee phone number okay and string address of employee and create here two more instance variables and it's int phone number okay and string address and write here phone number equals to employee phone number and address equals to employee address and create another employee object so let's create it and pass here values that will match to these parameters okay and it's suppose phone number seven eight okay and address suppose 22 and let's print here employee phone number and employee address and now if i run this code you can see here we got an expected output but in complete scenario if we notice to invoke all these constructors i have created here new employee class object each time 
but imagine in future if there is need to create more than 100 constructors to initialize fields then for each constructor you will need to create more than 100 employee objects so basically we will have to create more than 100 duplicate employee objects and due to this duplication of code will increase as well as somewhere it can leads memory issue and second problem is see here due to multiple object creation code can become bulky as well as lengthy and complicated to understand and due to this code readability will decrease right and we can solve such type of problems by the help of constructor chaining now question comes that how we can solve it right so let's understand so just write here this keyword with parenthesis and this represent current class constructor because these always refer to the current class object and pass here values that will match to the constructor which you have to invoke suppose i want to invoke this constructor and hence here i will need to pass argument or values that will match to this parameter so pass here designation senior software engineer okay and comment out this line similarly we can invoke these two parameterized constructor from this constructor okay so simply write here this and pass here employee name suppose xyz and employee id 301 and comment out this line also we do not need of it because this constructor will call automatically from here okay so let's run the code and let's see but before that let's understand execution flow of a program so listen carefully how flow is going on okay when i will execute this code then the first statement inside my method will execute so this statement will execute okay and employee class object will create and these two parameterized constructor get call and compiler look for this matching constructor inside employee class and will invoke this constructor and these values will set to these local variables employee phone number and employee address and then control come to this and here compiler understand that this is a current class constructor and therefore compiler look for this matching constructor inside current class that is inside employee class and will invoke this constructor and this value will set to this local variable employee designation so basically here the job of this keyword is to give a call to the matching constructor in a current class that is in employee class and then control come over here and these two parameterized constructor get call and will invoke this constructor and these values will assign to this local variable employee name and employee id then assign to these instance variables okay and then control come to this and the values of instance variable will print on a screen after that control come back over here and the employee designation will assign to this instance variable designation and will print on a screen then control come over here and employee phone number and employee address will assign to this instance variables and will print on a screen and then control come back over here and program will terminate so basically here i have called constructor inside constructor right here also i have called constructor inside constructor using this keyword so if we think first this constructor will call and will invoke this constructor and then this constructor will call and will invoke this constructor after that this constructor will call and will invoke this constructor so if we notice here it forming a chain of constructor right and hence this concept is called as constructor chaining so basically constructor chaining is the process of calling one constructor from another constructor of same class that is of current class clear so in this way we can create chain of constructor using this keyword so always keep in mind this keyword with parenthesis represent current class constructor and it is used to give a call to the matching constructor in a current class now let's run the code let's see what will be the output you can see here we got an expected output even here i have create only one employee class object and invoke multiple constructors instead of creating multiple employee class objects and due to doing this we can avoid duplication of code and this is one of the purpose of constructor chaining 
सो बेसिकली कंस्ट्रक्टर चेनिंग हेल्प टू रिड्यूस डुप्लीकेशन ऑफ कोड एज वेल एज कोड कैन बिकम इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इज कोड रिडेबिलिटी विल इनक्रीज सो बेसिकली कंस्ट्रक्टर चेनिंग हेल्प टू इनक्रीज कोड रिडेबिलिटी एंड रिड्यूस डुप्लीकेशन ऑफ कोड क्लियर एंड कंस्ट्रक्टर चेनिंग कैन बी डन इन टू वेज using this keyword within the same class that already here i have explained and second we can achieve constructor chaining using super keyword also and how we can achieve constructor chaining using super keyword i will explain in a future tutorial okay now let's focus on some rules that we should remember about constructor chaining so first rule is this expression should be the first statement in a constructor that means if i write this expression after some code of line suppose if i write here okay then it will generate error it's invalid let's see see here compiler raise an error constructor call must be the first statement in a constructor so always keep in mind this keyword with parenthesis must be the first statement in a constructor okay and second rule is is there should be at least one constructor without this keyword you can see here this constructor is without this keyword and third rule is constructor chaining can be achieved in any order that means if i change order of calling constructor that is if i call this constructor from here okay and this constructor from here then it's also valid no issue in it it will also work okay so let's see you can see here it's still working okay so basically constructor chaining can be achieved in any order clear and this is frequently asked question in many interviews that what happen if we change the order of constructors when the answer should be nothing constructor chaining can be achieved in any order okay clear that's it i hope you understand what is constructor chaining for now i am going to end this session so keep learning keep growing and thank you so much for watching